Hi tweens, welcome to our beginner embroidery workshop. In your kit, you will find a couple of pieces of yellow fabric that we'll use to practice our embroidery stitches. You'll find three pieces of felt, light brown, medium brown, and black that we will use for our final project. Your embroidery hoop. a skein of embroidery floss, which is what we call the thread you use to embroider, a couple of holders that ha have some colors of floss for your final project, your embroidery needle, it's taped to some cardstock, and a bookmark from Creative Bug, which is a free resource from the library. So let's talk about our materials a little bit. Your practice fabric is just a plain yellow cotton. Um, embroider can be done on any fabric. And for the purpose of the videos, I wrote the types of stitches we're going to be learning on the fabric. This is your embroidery needle. When you're not using it, I would recommend we're taping it to the cardstock. The needle has a pretty wide eye to make it easier to uh, thread. Some of your needles are a little bit bigger than others. It's got a blunt tip, um, so it shouldn't be too pokey. Uh, as you get better at embroidery, you might want to invest in smaller needles if you do finer stuff. Your hoop loosens and tightens with the screw up top here, and you pull out the center like that, and the fabric goes in between that and the outer rim. You can use any kind of scissors. They sell fancy scissors, but plain scissors are fine too. Now your floss. Embroidery floss um, is sold in a skein, and it's meant to be divided into threads so that you can use thick threads or thin threads depending on your project. You can kind of see it at the edge of the video here. Um, this one has got six strands, and maybe if I hold it up against the yellow fabric, you'll be able to see it better, um, that you can see are easily separated, like that. So um, your label usually tells you how many strands are in your floss. Now, to... Put your fabric in your hoop. You're going to position it over the inner rim. I'm going to do mine a little off kilter so that my words are on the side there. And then place your outer rim over your fabric, making sure it's even all the way around. And it should be nice and tight. And then you can tighten the screw to keep it in place. If you're, you're, that's what the back should look like. If you have trouble with your screw, you might ask your grown-up um, who to help you. Um, but the fabric should end up being nice and tight so that you have a good working surface. Our final project will be using the felt in the embroidery hoop, and so you're going to learn all the different stitches to make this cute bear. All right. So once you have your fabric set in your hoop and then you're going to want to thread your needle. So remember I said embroidery floss um, can be split into different threads. So this is a six strand skein of floss. I'm going to trim off um, a chunk, not too long because I don't want to get it all twisted and knotted um, to work with it to practice. And for practice purposes, I'm going to uh, split it in half into three threads each. And so you're going to divide your threads into two groups there. And then slowly pull them apart. I say slowly because embroidery floss loves to get tangled. Um, you may have to stop and, and uh, straighten it out a little bit and pull in the middle um, as you separate out your strands of floss. Um, you might need uh, a second person to help you as you learn how to do this, um, just to hold one of the strands while you hold the other 
uh, in the middle, the original. And then once you have it separated, you can, uh, you'll have two uh, similar strands of floss. You can put one aside for later, and then you can work on actually threading your needle. That's what we'll do next. All right, now that you've separated your floss, you're gonna take one half and you're going to thread your needle. Um, you might want to dampen the ends of your floss to make it uh, a little bit easier to thread with the, when the threads stick together of your floss, it's a little easier to get through the eye of the needle. And you're going to want to make sure that um, you leave a little bit hanging over from the end there. As you'll see in a second, once I get mine threaded, sometimes it takes grown-ups a bit too. I had to bring mine up to my old eyes to see, so you're going to want to leave a little bit over. You don't want to make any knots in your thread. Just leave it as it is. And you're going to start from the back. And today we're going to talk about do the running stitch, which is the most basic stitch. You're going to start from the back. You're going to pull most of the way through. You can see here, I'm going to leave quite a bit over the end here. And I'm just going to kind of hold on to it. Once you have a couple stitches in place, it shouldn't come out. So your next stitch, you're going to go through the front and you're just going to go in and out. You can decide how long you want your stitches to be. You can see you've come out through the back. You can decide you can make them big, you can make them little. Kind of in the middle in between is easiest to start with. Um, and you're going to want to decide how far apart your stitches are. Because in a running stitch you leave a space between each stitch. The biggest thing is getting consistent. You want your stitches to be all about the same size. So you can see there I've got two in a row about the same size. And so you're going to start up from the back and go in through the front. Just a continuous line. And I tend to use the stab method for this stitch. You want to try and keep your lines straight. If you need to, you can pencil it in to start with. It may help you keep a straight line and just go over your pencil spots. Like that. So that's your running stitch. Even stitches evenly spaced apart. That's what the back looks like. And you can continue going on all the way across to practice. I want to do one or two more stitches here. You can see that one's tilted a little bit. If I wanted to, I could take it out and redo it. But it doesn't bother me that much since this is just practice. Now, to finish my stitches, I'm going to slide my needle down underneath the back of a previous stitch, making sure not to poke through the fabric. So this way, my stitch doesn't come out of the of what I've done. It doesn't come undone. And you could do a couple like this, running through the back side of your stitches, just underneath. And you can see it's not showing in the front. And you can just trim it. If you're really nervous about <clears throat> the start of your stitching, you can tie a knot um, it's not encouraged, but I know a lot of beginners do do it uh, because they're nervous about the placement of their stitches. So if you do tie a knot, I would just suggest you um, 
make sure you cut it very closely to the edge of your um, the edge of your your work and making sure you don't cut the actual work itself because then it'll undo what you've just uh, completed. So here's an example of a little knot if you really have to, if you're worried about it. And just trim it like that. Like I said, it should hold otherwise. All right, now if you'd like to practice some more of this stitch, you can stitch all around the border of your hoop. Um, I'm going to practice doing the running stitch again, starting from the back, all around the outer edge using the other half of my floss that I had separated earlier. The more you practice, the better you get. And for this, I'm going to just try and fo follow the outer edge of my hoop. If you make a mistake, you can always just pull it through if you haven't made a knot, like this time. I just took the needle off my thread and just pulled the thread right out. Because if you're not paying attention, <laughs> that's what happens. So starting over again. And this is, again, one of the reasons why making knots are not encouraged. So that you can go back and fix mistakes a little more easily. So I'm going to thread using the second half, thread my needle using the second half of the floss that I separated. And I'm going to practice my running stitch all around the outer edge of my fabric. Um, that. I'm going to hold that in place. And I like to do that before I set the first stitch um, in case I decide I want my stitches to be smaller or bigger. And then I go back and set that stitch in later. And I'll show you that at the end. Remember that the key here with the running stitch is consistency in the size of your stitches. You want to try and keep them the same size and the same space apart. All right, keep working at it. The more you practice, the better you get.
All right, now floss likes to get tangled in the back. When this happens, sometimes you need to uh, undo a knot in the back, and you may need to use your needle. You can see here, you stick it in the center of the knot and try to wiggle it apart. And then you can undo your knot. It just likes to really tangle itself up. All right, we'll meet you back after I've done a few more stitches and we'll show you how to finish it off. Okay, so you can see here I um, worked my running stitch almost all the way around till I got to, to close to the end of my thread. I'm going to do a couple more stitches and then I'll show you how again how to finish off and anchor your stitches on either side. So again you're just going to slide your thread through some stitches on the back making sure it doesn't puncture the fabric on the front, and this will anchor your stitches down. And you can just trim it close to the edge there. Now, if I'm nervous about this first stitch and I want to go in and anchor it, I can thread my needle in there Again, this is why it's good to um, leave a good tail there so that you can go back and do this if you want to. And you can run it under the stitches that you already made and anchor it down there. And then trim the extra like that. So that's the running stitch today. To next time, uh, oh, make sure you put your needle away where it's safe. Next time we'll do the back stitch, the split stitch, and the chain stitch. Bye now.